Hello students and welcome to day two of our mini course on words with multiple meanings. Yesterday's word was run and today we'll focus on get. Again, a very common word but one that is extremely versatile. This means it can be used in lots of different ways. You already know the basic meaning of get but today you're going to learn 20 more ways to use it. Let's get started. Get means receive. You can get a gift, get an email, get a chance, meaning to receive an opportunity, get a grade on a test, get an award, get a scholarship. There are lots of collocations with get meaning receive. A second meaning of get is to obtain. Now this is a little different from receive. When you receive something, you made no effort. Someone else gave it to you. So if you get a gift for your birthday, you didn't do anything to receive it. But when you obtain something, you put in some effort. So you can get a job. You applied for the job. Maybe you did an interview and then they offered you the job. You can get information, meaning you go and search for the information so that you have it. You can get some sleep, meaning you take the action of going to bed. You can get results at work. So you're probably doing tasks in order to obtain results, get results. Get can also mean to buy. You can get tickets to a concert, you buy them. If you see someone wearing a shirt you like, you can say, where did you get that shirt? Meaning, where did you buy it? You can get something for a good price or get a bargain on something. Both of which mean to pay a fair or a small amount of money compared to the high value you receive. For example, you can get a bargain on the complete program at Espresso English because it's available at a 50% discount. So you can buy it at a good price. Another place we use get to mean buy is when we're ordering at a restaurant or coffee shop. It's very common to say, can I get a large coffee or can I get some French fries? Meaning you want to order, you want to buy that food or drink item. We also use get in the sense of bring. So if I'm already in bed and I feel cold, I might ask my husband, can you get me an extra blanket? Meaning, can you bring it to me? We often say go get when someone needs to go somewhere in order to bring back an item. So let's say there's a meeting at work and there aren't enough chairs in the meeting room. Then my assistant could go get more chairs, meaning she will go and then bring the chairs. Or if someone is injured, you might say, I'll go get the first aid kit, meaning you'll bring it. Informally, we use get to mean arrive. For example, I usually get home from work around six, meaning arrive at home. You can also use get when talking about arriving from travel. So if we take the next available flight, we'll get to New York on Monday morning. When asking for directions, you could say, how can I get to the train station? Meaning, how can I go there? How can I arrive there? Get also means become. You can get angry, get excited, get tired, get sick, get older, and get lost. Something can get better or get worse, meaning it is becoming better or worse. We also use it for changes in marital status. So two people can get engaged, meaning they plan to marry each other, get married, and get divorced. You can also get dressed, meaning to put on your clothes, and get ready, meaning to prepare yourself. When you get drunk, it means you become intoxicated with too much alcohol. And when you get used to something, it means you become accustomed to it. All these expressions I just mentioned use get in the sense of becoming or changing status. Another informal use of get is to understand. If you say, I don't get it, that means I don't understand. You can also say, I don't get, followed by a question word and the topic you don't understand. For example, I don't get why they broke up. They seemed to have a perfect relationship. I don't get how to use this computer program. Or if someone tells a joke and you didn't understand what's funny about it, you could say you didn't get the joke. If you get to do something, it means you have a good or a special opportunity. For example, if my kids finish all their homework, they get to watch a movie before bed. 
He's upset because he didn't get to take a vacation last year. Get to do something, meaning having a good or special opportunity. On the other hand, if you have got to do something, that means you need to do it. You have an obligation to do it or you should do it. This typically sounds like gotta in informal spoken English. Here are some examples of gotta referring to obligations. I've got to pick up my kids from school. If you borrow books from the library, you've got to return them. That movie is awesome. You've got to see it. That means you should. It's a strong recommendation, not necessarily an obligation in this case. Here's one that's a little different. When you get someone to do something, it means you persuade or convince the person to do it. For example, after a lot of discussion, I finally got him to agree with me. I convinced him to agree with me. It's hard to get my kids to help with housework. They don't want to help, so I need to persuade or convince them to help. I need to get my kids to help. Finally, when you get something done, it means you make or cause it to happen. Now, sometimes this means doing it yourself, and other times it means you cause someone else to do it for you. For example, I like to get all my housework done by noon. So this means I finished it myself. I get my housework done. My car has broken down. I need to get it fixed. This means someone else will do it. I'll probably take it to a mechanic and the mechanic will fix it. Get is also used in a ton of phrasal verbs. And many of these phrasal verbs also have multiple meanings. Here's just a sample of a few common phrasal verbs with get. To get along with someone means to have a good relationship with them without conflict. Or we could say the opposite, not get along with someone, meaning two people don't like each other or they have some conflict or tension in their relationship. For example, I'm glad I get along with all my coworkers. We have a good, nice, polite relationship. I don't get along with one of my cousins. I find her so annoying, so I don't get along with her. We don't have a good relationship. The phrasal verb get around is used for managing to go places physically. So if you have a broken leg, you would find it difficult to get around on crutches. Some cities like London have an extensive public transportation system, so it's easy to get around, to manage to go from place to place. Next, we have get back. This can mean to return to a place. For example, I'm going shopping at a bunch of stores and I'm not sure what time I'll get back, what time I'll return. There's another meaning for this phrasal verb and that is when we say get back at someone. It means to take revenge, to do something to hurt a person who hurt us in the past. The expression get over means to recover emotionally from a difficult experience. So if someone you love dies, it would take you a long time to get over it. Another way to use this expression is as a command telling someone, get over it. We do this when the person is continuing to be sad or upset over something minor or silly, and we want them to stop obsessing about a minor problem. We should probably only use this expression with very good friends. When it comes to transportation, we get into and get out of cars and we get on or get onto and get off trains, buses, planes, bicycles, and motorcycles. To finish up this lesson, let's look at a couple idioms with get. Get is used in hundreds of idioms, so this is just a small taste. If you'd like to focus more on idioms, you can join my 300 plus idioms course for a lot more expressions. Okay, our first idiom is to get wind of something, which means to learn about or hear about some secret, usually indirectly. Let's say a teenager is planning to have a party while his parents are out of the house, but then his parents get wind of it. They learn about this secret when they see a comment he made on social media. So they discovered the secret in an indirect way. When a celebrity or famous person is involved in a divorce, they often try to keep the details private because when the media gets wind of it, when they hear about it, then they will publish all the information about it. Another idiom is to get your act together. This means to take action, to become well-organized and better prepared. 
For example, let's say your friend Maria has started and stopped studying English many times in the past. She's never really taken it seriously. But then she could decide to get her act together by committing to an English course and establishing a regular schedule for studying. So she has taken action to be better organized. One very informal expression you might hear in TV shows or casual conversations is, get a load of this. We say it when we want to call someone's attention to something that seems especially notable or interesting. If you see a luxury car that you know is worth $100,000, you could say to your friend, get a load of that car, because you want your friend to notice it. Some people also say, get a load of this, when they are about to share some scandalous information. For example, get a load of this. Our college professor was fired because he was flirting with one of his students. We want the person to pay special attention to what we are about to say. Sometimes when you're doing a task, you enter a state where you really have all your energy focused on it. You're totally concentrating on it. And as a result, you are working or learning very smoothly and efficiently. Entering this state of concentration is called getting in the groove. Sometimes when I'm writing English lessons, I get in the groove and the ideas come very easily to my mind because I'm so focused and fully immersed in the task. Or maybe you like to do a big cleaning of your house once a month. You take the whole day to get in the groove and fully clean your house from top to bottom. I hope my lessons can help you get in the groove when it comes to studying English. My goal with Espresso English is to help you learn in a way that's easy, efficient, and fun. That's all for today. Make sure to tune in for tomorrow's video on Words with Multiple Meanings.